Welcome to the Magical Motherhood Podcast, where we gather as mothers who are actively healing our witch wound and are devoted to celebrating diversity while nurturing ourselves, each other, our families, and you. I'm Ariana Mogg, human resource extraordinaire by day, human design embodiment coach by night, pop culture obsessed nerd, and West Indian green witch 24 7. Hello, I'm Hallie Kuhanna, a.k.a. the Bougie Hoodoo, a.k.a. your Mississippi mystic, and a.k.a. the soccer mom sorceress. I use my head, my heart, and my hands to make magic that heals and inspires my family, my friends, and the collective. I'm Karen Lapage, sewing fairy godmother, connection weaver, possibility amplifier, spiritual modality dilettante, and professional pattern maker, focused on healing through making and expanding inclusivity in every direction, whether that's in my work, my community, or in my own heart. Erica Cullum here, a 21st century witch slash entrepreneur practicing my craft through intuitive coaching and consulting at my biz collective commons while also homeschooling and advocating for justice on all fronts. If you're just joining us now, we'd love to invite you to hop back to the beginning of the podcast season and listen to our first episode to get an idea of who we are. We thought about leaving this episode recorded last summer in the archive. Our audio is better now and we know each other more deeply, but we couldn't resist bringing forward a couple of episodes to invite you in from the early days. And this is one of them. In it, we talk about archetypes. When we're speaking of archetypes, we're talking about a universal symbol or image present in the collective unconscious. It's so recognizable that many of us could easily name a person who plays this role in our lives. You can find archetypes in the tarot, in television, in movies, in the classic hero's journey, or you can make them up like we did here. In this episode, we'll talk about how we curated our village when our kids were little and the archetypes we needed to populate that village. Take a deep breath, grab a cup of tea, and settle in to spend some time together. You're not alone. Y'all, the card I pulled for us is the lover's. Which is, yeah, for today, which I think is um, interesting because, you know, so many of our decks show this Adam and Eve situation, right? Mm -hmm. Like with the, yeah, Raphael and, you know, you know, it can be about some wonderful, you know, match made in heaven. We always know, we know too, that this is the you know, the counterpart to this is the devil, right? Like this is how it started. And the devil is like how it you know, how it's going or like, yeah, how it's going or how it ended. But, um, but you know, the, one of the much, much, much older versions of this card shows, showed, um, a man choosing between two women and with Cupid mm-hmm. up in the, you know, with Cupid up in the tree, like about, and it basically is like, make the right choice. And the choice that, you know, is in service to your best and highest self or the fates or the gods will come in and make the, de- you know, <laughs> the fates of the gods will come in and make the decision for you. So as we get our conversation started about, you know, our our village, building our village, um, you know, that's going to join with us to like raise this, you know, this wonderful new generation of, you know, just beautiful beings. Let's, you know, like we can make some choices, you know, like we can make some intentioned um, choices, choices that are in best service to ourselves and best in service to our own small families, which of course, affects the greater community. So that's what I see um, with this as we get ready to start the conversation. And and also, yeah, like sometimes there is a little serendipity. There is a little magic, like that perfect person, like the perfect place, that irresistible draw to like a certain, you know, another, you know, um, people shaped energy that will help you, you know, in in friendship and in sisterhood um, or in camaraderie, like as we on our parenting journey. So that's our card, the lovers, lots of different things to think about with that one. Okay, so you picked the lovers. So can you tell us about the the three of pentacles that you felt was a, a card for today as well? If I were to choose a card to meditate on, if I were setting intentions again, and I might still do with my daughters, even though they're a little bit older and I feel pretty firmly set, like in my foundations, I would pick the three of pentacles because that is the card of collective work and like collaboration. Whenever I get ready to go to a board meeting or any, any kind of meeting, like that's collaborative, I will slap like the three of pentacles up there, especially in the beginning. Um, if I'm wanting to get off to a great start with a new group, and this is a, a beautiful, 
and this Rachel Trueheart deck, this is the three of pentacles. And it, and it, and you know, the messages, you know, first of all, we're talking about what is it we're building here in the real and the mundane, right? Like in the everyday and how we need different energies, talents, skills in order to build something beautiful and long lasting, right? The traditional version of this, I, I love it because it also reminds me of that um, book by Follett and many series pillars, uh, is it pillars of fire? I think it is. And, you know, the card show is a builder, an architect um, and a monk and how they all have to come together um, in order to build this cathedral. Right. Like a structure that is a place that people come to worship and gather that last centuries. Right. So it's, you know, just a great card about, you know, understanding that, yeah, you need some different different people, different energies in order to, you know, to build something great and long lasting. So that's the one I would choose for my meditation and my rituals around setting intentions around curating my built village or building my village. I love those two together. Aren't they good? Yeah. Yeah. It's nice mm-hmm. little. Yeah. If we look at the lovers as discernment. Hmm. And that we can actually, yeah, we can, quiet our minds, generate power, focus, you know, like focus that power to build what it is we want. We really, we really can. So I hope we inspire some, some, some moms or people that are mom or motherhood curious to, to explore that. Yeah. I think no matter where you are on your journey, like whether you have children or not, like everybody needs a village. It's like what Dr. Brene Brown says, right? Like as humans, we are hardwired for connection Mm -hmm. and without it, we suffer. Um, And so wherever you are, you need to have that village. And Q, you saying something that even though your girls are older now, like the the village is never complete. That's how I feel, at least. In my opinion, the village is never complete. Like it is, there's an open door there, right? Like sometimes people come, sometimes people go. We outgrow certain spaces and places and people and that's just part of the thing so yeah I noticed that a lot recently we started um a new homeschool program yesterday and the people so when pandemic started we had there was kind of this um mom group this like local mom group that started that we had started this Marco Polo which is like sending video messages um you know cutting it whenever we started it for our kids so they could talk because they were all in a program together but then it soon got taken over by the moms (laughs) um and we were like this support group for each other which was amazing and I was just thinking about last night it's kind of fizzled out but like it it was like very much like a huge anchor for us for, you know, a year and a half. And I think we got each other through some things, but, you know, now like, again, it's just kind of that transition where, um, you know, we've, we've been able to find some other spaces and other things are going on and that group isn't as active, but um, yeah, I'm so thankful that we had it when we did because we all really, really needed it. So I suppose with that, my question for y'all today was going to be when we're thinking about building these villages, like who are, are there like archetypes or roles that you kind of like fill or, or feel are important in your village? Like, I know, I know my husband and I think about this, like if we were to ever move, you know, we're like, oh, but we have so many great people here. And like the, the first people that we think of are like, we have, you know, at least a couple people that we know that we can call any time of day and it doesn't matter what. And they like your ride or dies, like they will be here. Like if we needed something, we know that we have some dependable people here that, you know, they would show up at four o'clock in the morning if we needed them. I've never had someone who would show up at four o'clock in the morning. It's me. Oh, I can definitely see that, Karen. So I'm, I'm the one who shows up at four in the morning, I guess. I guess that's my goal. Yeah. Well, when I learn to teleport, Karen, I'll be your 4 a.m. person. I know. I'm thinking of so many, um, God, for me, oh, geez. I definitely, I love the mentor mom. Like, there's this one mom that I truly, I have two there's a mentor kind of couple and a mentor mom and especially around sports stuff um and trying to navigate all that because I've had to 
deal with that. And it's this whole separate, toxic, bizarre system that I was trying to nurture and guide a little brown girl through. And there's this one mom who she's our daughters are the same age. Um, but her daughter is the third child and the last child. So she's been through college applications. She's been through like sports recruitment. She's been through independent versus, you know, like independent versus private. She's a woman of color. So she, you know, so we can talk about, you know, racism, colonialism and oppression, like in these systems and have somebody to talk to. And she's, you know, she's got me by about six or seven years. So she's, you know, she's older. Like she's the kind of person I, I feel like when I'm just, you know, like so angry, she's a person that I can call and she's, she'll list. First of all, she'll receive. And then she'll, you know, she definitely clicks in with that just kind of maturity, that wisdom kind of big sister. And then like, Halicky, okay, now we've cried about it. Dry it up. Let's go. <laughs> like, let's, let's, let's get to, you know, let's get to, get to work, you know, like get to work out here. So in, in, so in a few ways, she's a little motherly, you know, like to, to me, cause you know, we feel vulnerable, um, in our positions as mom. And I would say another person, and just as kind of like an archetype, but I, I don't know if I can, I should probably look and try to match it up with an actual archetype for my deck. But I also love that mom that is a little obsessed with health and nutrition, like just a little bit, like she's a little obsessed. And I love it because I'm like, girl, I can never do that. But when it comes to certain trends, like she knows so much and is so full of information, like every now and then I'm like, nettles. Okay. Nettles. <laughs> it's nettle season and nettles good for us. Okay. I'll do that. I can do that like once a week. Okay. <laughs> I do feel better. My skin looks great. Like, so I love that, you know, like, it's awesome to have one person, you know, like that one person that's because they're just kind of this walking encyclopedia. And I feel like this one girlfriend I have that's a mom and I feel for her kids, honestly, because I, I, I she's got the time and the money to be that like so specific, you know, so specific with such high standards for everything that goes into the child's mouth. I can do it. I don't know that I'm capable of doing it, but I love that she's so full of information, just just like the little nuggets that like fall off. I'm like, oh, OK, I can pick that up and use you know, like I can I can use that in my home. Those are two of my favorites. I literally have a whole list. Um, don't even get me started about the tour guide mom, the mom that knows all the hot new stuff. Like if there's some new thing, the ice cream museum or this is what the kids are doing. This is what we're doing this week. Like I love her, too. So anyway, I, I, there's so many. We also meet, need when we're out in the world, um, the one who brings the snacks, the one who um, like makes sure there's something for every kid who pays attention to the allergies and the preferences and the, um, you know, the things that are important to the kids and the parents and that, you know, for meetings or for playdates or for whatever, keep everybody from melting down. We need that one too. And I don't know if that's the same one as the mentor mom or if it's the health obsessed mom, but I just called it the one who brings the food <laughs> because there's a whole realm of care around that. Like the foresight to make sure toddlers aren't melting down because, you know, the moms want to talk for one more minute, but this kid eats at 11, 11 and it's 11, 12. And, you know, then the whole the whole play date can break down because this kid's one minute away from their scheduled meal. Um, yeah. So that's uh, that's somebody who keeps that together, that organized. So maybe it's the one who organizes, not just brings the food, like picks a restaurant if you're going out or a coffee shop or it like likes to yes. do that because there's mm -hmm. always someone who likes mm -hmm. to do that. And why would we deprive them of that? Like, I remember once, once on a, why would we do that when I'm like, well, girl, I don't want to do it. I know it's true. Joking, I'm being serious. So true. There are people <laughs> that would like, they need to be the man, the team manager. Like they need to be, they need to be the room parent and God love them for that. God love them for that, for remembering the teacher, volunteer teacher brunch and that's me. Thank God. I remember somebody like, oh, can you believe her? And I was <laughs> like, thank me. God for her. I was like, girl, I don't want to do it. I don't want to split up the check. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to survey the whole, 
Girl Scout troop to find out, like, you know, like, there's that mom that, like, she knows where we have to eat. You're right, Karen, because she knows where we have to eat because this one is uh, gluten free. This one has got... Exactly. This one can't have red dye. This oh one my God, no love them. No. That, oh my God, distribute those Girl Scout cookies. Like do all that stuff. That's why I'm just like, y'all don't slander these. Don't slander these, these saints that are doing this work that like, I can't do it. Like, I, or I don't want, yeah. I can't do it. I don't want, you know, like I don't want to yeah. do it. And can't want to. It gives what we say. Yeah. I can't want to do that. And it, and it gives, it gives them pleasure. The way it gives me pleasure <laughs> chaperoning. It's weird. Yeah. Like, but I love, I love being that, being I the chaperone. Too. Like I love. I love that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll never forget like the girls. um, I was real proud of this because I I give soccer moms a lot of slander, but the team voted me favorite mom at like their end of the year thing. They were like, and the look and the quotes, the quotes were like, Oh, they, it, the, but the codes were so great from the good girls were like it always smells delicious and mysterious in Halicu's room and I was like Lord these children have never smelled Palo Santo or like any kind of like, like yeah. incense it smells good in here because I know how to burn just enough to keep the hotel like so anyway so just when you said that like the one that that does the you know divides everything up I'm like yes and thank goodness for them and let's uplift them and not slander them because I, I can't do it Hallie Q, that's a really, I mean, yes, this is, this is funny and enjoyable, but it's also the way that you're talking about this is a really important point for how we make friends as adults and how we're already formed as personalities, as much as we're going to have personal growth, like we definitely, it takes some effort to step into new archetypes. And so like seeing this in people and appreciating it, that's why you're the favorite mom, Hella Q. It's not because your room smells good. It's because you see people and appreciate them for who they are. And that's, you know, it's a training for motherhood. It's also training for collecting a village, like being willing and able to see people for who they are and lift them up. That's beautiful. And thank you for that. Oh, thank you for saying that, Karen, because and that's another thing, like, that's the blessed part of being where I'm not quite where because Karen's got real grown ones, but um, I'm not quite there yet. But having done it like, you know, and thinking back, like uh, back when I was out to here and I was lonely in a big, gigantic city, not knowing what to do. I that's the value of experience. Right. And being at a different life stage, like being in that, like, you know, towards the. You know, like we're in that still in that mother phase, but, you know, the full bloom, the rose, but that first petals getting ready to drop. Like, that's the wonderful part about looking back, Um, because back then I would have said to myself, I need to be all that or like I need to feel I need to feel bad because I don't like doing the check. I don't want to be the team manager because I'm not great with ticking boxes. And what's wrong with me? I'm a bad mom. I'm not a good mom. Whereas now I'm like. Yeah, because we can't we don't all we don't have to fulfill all those roles. It's and it's OK. And let's be let's be grateful because the parent that the mom that you're right, like the mom that maybe is a bit, um, you know, maybe she's you know, she's a little obsessive about the food stuff. But, you know, she'll always in a situation, she'll always have something for everybody because she's got to be concerned with the needs of her family. So special needs I'm on it you know so she's like you know like like special needs or specific needs like I'm on it and we can embrace that like we don't have to be crappy about it or slag off on ourselves cuz we're not yeah that archetype yeah that is so real i love <laughs> your descriptions because I'm like placing my friends in those categories for sure and I think what's attracted me to them and why I need them in their own like unique ways is because they represent part of myself but like to an extreme that I'm just not there yet (laughs) like like things I'm genuinely interested in like oh yeah I'd love to know like what's hip and buzzing around town or a new place like oh that playground has digger diggers that people just leave there Leland would love that but I I'm not gonna find it myself um but I need them to know so that I can ask and that's yeah I think part of curating um the village and the archetypes that they have are we're all we're always like floating through archetypes and, and evolving through them in our own different ways. But if they have one that I'm like leaning more towards in the season of life or the season of the year, then I'd love to like just kind of 
be in closer contact with them so they can remind me like, oh, this is available to me. Like this is a choice and this is an option and I can pick what works for my family and leave what doesn't. But yeah, like the more extreme versions of myself or things that I like really value or want to get into, but don't have the time, but definitely have the interest. I need those folks. Totally agree with that. Woof systems. Also, I would venture to say that even the the people that seem to have everything balanced um, maybe don't feel that way, right? Um, but I think that there's definitely something. Yeah, there's definitely something in that. And like as you all were speaking, um, this is something that I, this was business advice that I was given. But when I was thinking about it, it really feels like it applies here as well. And someone was telling me about um, and I've shared this in some of my workshops, too, that you make your own personal board of directors. Um, and I was advised to have someone that was, you know, ahead of me in the game. Right. Like where I want to be someone that was kind of like right in the thick of it in the same space as me someone that was maybe a couple steps behind me and then and then like a ride or die right and those were like the four kind of archetypes um that maybe in your in your parenting journey or you know your your life journeys we need those people too right we need the people that have done it that can help us see like okay you're going to I've made it through this you can make it through this maybe someone you know like someone that's in it with you and someone that it's always nice too right like whenever we're feeling overwhelmed it's nice to at least for me and I, I'm also this team manager person that y'all are speaking of, and I don't know how to not be, but like, it's, it's nice to be helpful, right? Like, even when you feel like you're like sucking at something, it's like, oh, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not getting this part down, but I know this part and I can help somebody with this. And that um, helps me a lot when I am having a time. So last night was back to school night for sophomores, one third at a time at my youngest high school. And so only one parent could go at a time again because of safety protocols. Um, so I got to go and it was so wonderful to see, like, we have the team player, the team leader parent, like managing the PTA. Like there's a QR code, you sign up online, there's no paper for anything. There are three completely different people standing behind this table, a dad, um, a mom of color, a white mom, different ages, like we represent the, you know, the parent body community. And I was like, OK, I can I can want to be on this. And because I'm going to be 50 and I have my own business and I have three other kids like who are adults and a husband who is like managing his like <laughs> last 10 years of working and how to how to exit gracefully at some point, maybe. Um I don't, I'm not going to lead any committees, but I, and I used to be really down on myself about that. Like, oh, I want to sign up for this because I have ideas and I want to like uh, be in charge. And now I know, no, you know what? I have way more things to work with right now in my life. And I recognize that. And I'm going to sign up and be the one who, if I have time, will show up, be a body, be told what to do. I'll chaperone if anybody goes anywhere again <laughs> someday in the after times. Um, someone needs an art project. I'm on it. Like I, I know my, I know my lane now and um, not that there's not room for growth, but like when it comes to not really my own village necessarily, because I guess this is more like the suburbs, like the PTA is not going to be <laughs> like my close friends, but who knows? You never know who you're going to meet. Right. So that's the other thing is being open to maybe someone at first glance who isn't going to or you have a little friction with, but then you learn to appreciate who they are and you get to know each other a little deeper. So I'm just open to meeting these other parents. So and I, I do have a flexible schedule so I can show up and bring flowers for Teacher Appreciation Day. It, I will be buying them that morning and driving them over after I drop the kid off so she's not late. But, you know, someone else doesn't have to do it because I can take half an hour out of my morning because of my schedule. Um, the other thing I noticed was that they had all these tables set out outside of the different clubs. And Ella told me that's like 
half maybe of the clubs that were available. And one of them is this one she belongs to. It's the the nerd club, like the self-identified nerd club. And they've been getting together either virtually or in person outside to watch movies every Saturday night. So that's meant that we have date night at home. <laughs> So even if she's watching in her in her bedroom on Zoom, we uh, we can like at least watch a show that we wouldn't watch with her. Or just sit down and talk about stuff we wouldn't talk about necessarily with her, which is so there's so little of that. But it's just nice to know there's the space for that. And also everything they do is so interesting and exciting. Um <laughs> I wish I would have had these kinds of clubs when I was in high school, like to actually be able to join a self-proclaimed nerd club. I mean, that would have been such a joy um, instead of trying to be something else all the time, or I guess not try to be something else, but try to figure out <clears throat> where I slot it in <clears throat> and be able to just experiment with this identity and archetype out loud with other people who also identified that way. And um, she said that ev almost every mom that showed up at her table, because she worked the table for the freshman evening, was saying, I wish I would have had this. Do you have one for moms? <laughs> and the kids were like, Mom, you can make your own. <laughs> so the Moms of Nerd Club may happen. So Maybe. That was... it, it, I, that's so awesome. And that stuff is real. Like, I, I don't envy, but man... This has got to be a part of my own shadow work and my own healing. I've got to investigate like, but don't you, it's not envy, but man, the, the communities these kids have like now, like, okay, people that are super into this, this, and this, like, don't even have to worry about that, that, you know, that awful moment that, you know, in just, uh, it's just living in this country that if you go to like a more traditional school like that, who do I sit with? Like, you know, like that awful moment. They don't have to deal with there's a there's a black girl magic club at my daughter's school that she won't be a part of. Like it breaks my freaking heart because like she's biracial. So I think she's just like, well, you can't label me like which is and part of me. Exactly. And that's and she's my little scary Scorpio. And I respect like the hell out of her boundaries. So I'm like she. But every time I see like the emails from the black girl magic, all I can think is, but I can still be a parent sponsor. How about that? Like, what if I'm, st you know, like I can still show up with cupcakes or, you know, or help do whatever. And I realize that and not that I'm supposed to be living through my own, you know, like through my own child or like the structure, but, but I was like, no, but that's awesome. And little black and brown girls should see themselves like in other people and other adults at this school. So I'm going to do it. Like, I'm like, even if it's just refreshment, y'all just tell me when the, just, <laughs> you know, just, just tell me when, um, oh, and I actually got this really cool little card deck for them um because I love giving decks to girls so it's just like a little um little moments in black history like little oracle deck like I'm like just like okay so I'm like here I bought this for y'all I don't know what y'all are gonna do with it but <laughs> here, you, here you go like so you're right Karen like it's it's interesting seeing these um you know like these different like you know, like these different communities that are available, like for the kids now that we just we didn't have. But but thank goodness we get to witness. Right. Oh, no kidding. The Social Justice Club, the Pride Club, the Mural Club, the Theater Tech Club, Dungeons and Dragons, like just out loud, like instead of hiding in a basement somewhere <laughs> out loud and beautiful um, Asian food cooking club. There was an Asian food cooking club at this school. Like. It's beautiful. I love it. Yeah, it's def it's Seattle, but you know, there's also I need her to move to Seattle. Are in Michigan, they, <laughs> it's a lot. There's more now than there was when I was a kid in Michigan too. I mean, there was like the swim team and pom pom, and, and like it was just teams. It wasn't really. If you wanted a club, it was just offline. But uh, you, again, you know, I graduated in 1990, so. <laughs> Um, maybe by the time we had high school, high school, we had the art club. But if you wanted to be in theater tech, you had to join the play. Like you didn't just get to learn things a little bit at a time. It was all part of a production. So anyway, it was really nice. And I also love to hear that I'm not the only mom who wants <laughs> nerd club for me now not to go back in time. Yeah. I mean, we have our own nerd club here. 
<laughs> but yeah, it was it was really lovely. And Hallie Q, your point about um, just because your daughter doesn't want to be in the Black Girl Magic Club doesn't mean you can't be in it, like as a parent sponsor. And so maybe that's what you have to offer. It isn't necessarily just to your own kid. So here we're back to the village again, right? Um, your role doesn't necessarily have to, your kid may already have that in hand. I think that's a, a role for the village as yeah. y'all were both talking about that. Like the, the, um, sometimes we have these people that don't necessarily have the time, right. To like pour into these projects or these things or whatever, but they have resource. And so they're like, I can help, I can help in this way. And we, we need those people too. Like, yeah, sometimes we just need resource to help us make the things happen. Yeah, the one who brings all the art supplies from the older kids but doesn't have time to teach the class. And maybe there's the one who is there to teach the class. I mean, we had a homeschool co-op for my for this one who's now a sophomore in high school in first and second grade. And that's that's how that went. You know, everybody contributed because we didn't have another option. I mean, inside the school uh, construct there. So mm -hmm. that's the whole point of a village, right? Trust. Trust that someone's going to show up. In a way, if you don't have, if all you have is love and support for the kid and not the experience or the resource or connections, um, that someone's going to show up with the resource and connections and you provide that baseline of love and support. And I think about like with, you know, as as we love all these like magical things and human design and things like that, as far as um, just having the people around you that help, you know, that help you you know, that have the other gates that like, if you're in human design, right, that make a channel or just in, you know, elementally, like, you know, whatever you're into, astro astrologically, like just finding those balance between, between the people and like, not one person, no one's ever going to be everything to everybody, right? Like we need that, that group, um, that rotation of just personality and culture and just unique weirdness um, to round us out. If I were doing it all over again, um, and perhaps I'll get a chance to with the, with the teenager going off to college, which is this whole thing that I'm, I'm starting right now. I'm going to go back and look at Karen's like literally like some of her videos and tutorials because I'm a little obsessed with the idea of in her sheets, like stitching in spells and like maybe some little Grigi, Grigri or Mojo bag. So I can like just as a way to like <laughs> to first of all, be working, you know, and dealing and still doing magic and doing whatever I can or to send with her as much of my protective love with her as I can. Perhaps I'll have to do it over again in college um, if I were doing it all over again. Oh, man. How would I, I'm trying to think of, I, I would definitely do ritual around it. I would, I would, um, there's something about that summertime, like end of summer, like that, you know, um, you know, that beautiful, you know, the equinox, like getting just, you know, like getting into fall and winter and that when kind of the kids all come back together. Um, I don't know. I would do something where. I would just try to invite as many of the kids or as many of the moms as I could like over to my home to just do something around like a like a new like something around a new moon, even if it's just. And I think I'm to this point with my friends and the people that I would gather around me just to I'm like, you know what, let's put on this music and for five minutes, like, don't even say anything. Like I have these bay leaves. Like that's the kind of thing I would like, I would literally like go to the tree, like get a branch and be like, let's write our intentions for these darlings and for ourselves like this year, just something like that. Something outside. Like I consider myself, I'm an eclectic kudu, but I, I'm also a fire witch. I love setting stuff on fire, like something around. And in Northern California, it's just a natural thing for people to do to like gather around a fire. Um, I would do something like that. I would I would definitely bring some some candles into it, some petitions, some journaling into it and do some kind of ritual around it. Like, you know, strengthening the bonds that I already have and inviting in, you know, whatever new energy and also doing what I could to. You know, in the in the um, in the waning phases with every with every bath, with every shower, I'd be like, you know, who, what, 
relationships do I need to release? Like, what are the ones that are not serving me? Right. And just from the, y'all know how we do it. Like from the top of our, (laughs) from the top of our heads, like just all the way down, like, what do I, you know, and you know, what do I need to release in order to continue to grow this strong, loving village? Like that's pretty amorphous, but that's probably where I'd start. No, that's good. And then sealing in your boundaries while you lotion up, right? Sealing in the warmth and your intentions, and then also providing a barrier, a boundary. Um, Yeah, reinforcing your healthy boundaries um, with a physical representation of that. Yeah. And we all, you know, (laughs) moisturize our way to happiness, but, you know, that's... That's a way to get there. And another, I have to be honest, like another thing I would add in, um, literally there are sometimes I can literally still hear my grandmother. Like she's like, and what y'all need to be doing is praying for the spirit of discernment. Like that's what, so like, and, and bring something about discernment, like into the, into the conversation. Cause we could avoid so many, like, again, and who do we call them conditions? Like we could just avoid a lot of conditions that are painful and uncomfortable if we, if we do, if we try to bring in that spirit of discernment, think, you know, commune with an ancestor, like who was the one that like had those firm boundaries and was not taking, you know, like could still be a relatable, loving person, but was like, but what you're not going to do is this, like, you know, like, you know, that could establish those boundaries. Um, so yeah, I try to bring in, which to me feels like an air element. Like that's a real, like that feels like super cerebral and like mental, like however we can bring in the, um, that spirit of discernment as grandma used to say like we could i try to bring that in as well yeah the lover's card again right well i would like to offer q those are beautiful and i think in my mind a lot of times i'm like i'm gonna do these amazing rituals but what happens more often than not is like we're at the playground and i'm like oh shit and it's just like real quick like let me do a quick little like oh we're here there's a bunch of kids okay we're gonna do a quick like just me like everyone here is you know we're meeting for our highest good we are like safe and protected you know like little sugar ray over on my kid running on the playground because I forget right so I think it's for me I've had to find ways to like really quickly ground back into myself and my magic and that earth and just do a little quick intention while we're like in the car about to hop out of this class or something like that. Um, because I get lost and I think about doing these big fancy rituals and then I forget or I don't get to them and we get to the point and it's like, oh, and now here we are in a new place. We're about to meet new people. And so we have to do a quick like, um, I'll ask my kid a lot, like we'll be in the car. I'm like, can we, I was like, do you want a little like energy, a little protection bubble? And she'd be like, no, I'm cool. I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> But I think, um, you know, we've been we've been trying to find ways to just um, be more. I've At least I have. Right. Because I'm probably the most magical person in my family of setting intentions for us a little bit more on the go, which has worked out really well. We went to the park on Sunday. It was great. We met some friends. We met new friends like I don't for uh, Ariana, you might relate to this more but like you know when you're at the playground and you just start talking to other parents and um yeah we met some really really cool people and I was like oh this is great like we had that we had that intention I had a moment like we had our dog too and so I had like the dog needed to like go for a little walk I was just looking back and there was just like adults and kids on the playground and it was like in our little neighborhood and I was like this is it made me so so happy um I was just like seeing, seeing everyone running and playing together. Um, But it was definitely, it's like in moments like that, I think where I remember those intentions and I like ground back into them. Yeah. It doesn't have to be way ahead of time. It can be in the moment, like realizing that it's never too late to start in the, in your life or in the day. Right. I love that Erica. Like, oops, (laughs) here we are in the car. (laughs) Or here we are on our walk on our way there. Yeah. I don't want to derail. I don't want to derail conversation, but I am just being flooded with these freaking memories of do y'all did did people ever do play date cards? Like I literally made in London, like I made play date cards because we didn't like it was before you could really it was so easy to text. Like in London, I still remember my first Blackberry. My first like texting wasn't always like what it is right now. And I just remember thinking, oh my, 
Yeah, but I was like, oh my God, now that's something that I remember. Like, was I doing contact magic? Because I remember, I still remember certain people that I gave the card to. And I remember thinking like, see this, like, I'm going to tuck this right. You know, like our kids are playing. There wasn't this like, use your phone. And I just remember being like, she's cool. I really want her to see this and like, call me. Um, and as I'm thinking back to like, Hallie's like little play dates, like, First, that I even did play date cards. Number two, play date cards are freaking brilliant. And I, that's another thing I think if I still had little ones, I'd probably still do. Like, because again, in my tradition, like we love powders and we love, you know, contact magic or something, you know, that uh, I don't know if y'all ever read that book, Mama Day, but she would one of the aunts would do like contact magic with her with her niece and like if her niece wanted a job she would help her write the letter and put a powder on it so that when she the person opened it up like they would you know and then after they closed it they would still remember her or smell you know like or smell her or have her essence so anyway this is just reminding me of that I was like now that's something I was like I'm sure that's what I was doing I was probably putting intention into that like you know, and a little gentle push, like, see me, see us, let's be friends. I'd love for our kids to get together. I don't know how possible that would be now, but if I were doing it all over again, I think that's something I'd replicate again. I love that. I, I'm so intrigued by this contact magic. I have never thought about that, but yeah, Q, like for Amy's birthday parties for the first ones, like a lot of people do the e-invites now, but I made postcards and like sent them out to everyone. I was like, I want people to put these on their fridge. Um, <laughs> Let's put my kid on there. But also, like, even in this past year when we've gone out, she will make friends at the park or whatever. And then the kids are like, can we play together again? And so, like, I've been handing people my business card um, because, like, especially if, like, we get along, like, if the parents get along because it's sometimes it's hard. And it's like, yeah, if you find like I found a cool mom the other day at the botanical garden. I was like, and the, kid, the kids were like, can we play together again? And I was like, yes, but play date cards. I should have my own cards for my kids. Genius. I enjoyed cards. designing them too. Like it was, it must've been one of the first, yeah. like this was, this was y'all. It was, we were in London. We came back here 2010, but I just remember like the first time, like being able to do your own little avatar and like, like what I kind of like looked like and wanting to really, oh gosh, when I think about those play dates, I would go like above and beyond on the play dates. Cause I just wanted the kids to just think when Hallie invites you for a play date, like, yay, you know, cause I was such a lonely kid myself and it was weird, like navigating London. And so I was, I went like way like above and beyond. Um, but I'm so glad I have such fond memories. Like when we, and we still try to go back there, those friends, my daughter still like they're 17, like Hallie 17 now, like she's like, I need to see Anna and I need to see Sophia. Like, uh, you know, like, so whenever we go back, like they still like, they see each other on Snapchat and stuff, but, but I still remember that time. And I'm still glad I used to go, you know, I'm like, I'm going to give you all my best stuff with that. Like I got to try to find one of those play date cards. I have not thought about that. <laughs> like, in years but i'm gonna go back and see if i can find one please find one we want we want to see this this oh this original design work mm. <laughs> the og play date card yeah yeah i mean even just making those Whew. i think i just tried to do that internally i i never would have, i was overwhelmed like two stepchildren and two children all at once i i didn't have one second but when i showed up as if someone invited me somewhere and we showed up, you got my full attention and I participated fully. And I, you know, I might have to be the one who brings the paper plates because like, you know, there was a lot going on all the time at home. Um, and my husband traveled all the time. So, you know, it was me and either two or four kids at a time. So, um, yeah, that, uh, I would though. It's like <laughs> they shine out from my heart. Like, please, like, let's do something together. And I'd say words. You know, I might not write a thank you note, but I would sure seek someone out and thank them. Um, because I, I feel like my voice has. Um, I don't know. It communicates more one to one than um, than I am able to do in a written word. I've always kind of struggled with that. So, yeah, I would just seek them out to thank them. But I, I, was, I would cry if I received a, I probably still have it if someone gave me a thank you card. In fact, I do. 
or teaching the art class for the kids at the homeschool co-op. I wish I had known at the time that that is enough instead of wishing I was the one to think about writing a thank you card because I would have loved to receive a card because words are fleeting and I don't value them enough. Um, or I didn't value them enough coming out of my mouth. That um, knowing that you are enough, I think is something when you just said that, Karen, that I think is like, as we're talking about this village too, and you think about like your own role within your village, right? Because you have a role also. Um, and you might be a different person to different people, but I think it's it's trusting and knowing that you're enough is so, so important. And just, yeah, grace and compassion for wherever you're at right now. You know, we're taught, or maybe we're not taught anymore, but my generation was definitely taught that motherhood is a thankless job. And let's not, let's thank each other for it. Thank each other for whatever parts we play in the village. If we're thinking about being mothers, like practice thanking people. I am not religious, but I will amen to that. Thank you. Thank you, magic moms. Thank you. I think that seems like the perfect and natural end. You're invited to head over to magicalmotherhood.club to sign up for our free email list so we can send you a special gift.